probably lost at Town Hall under, uh, recovery. Oh no! <laughs> Did that happen? Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Alright. So just for a quick review of what it is we're doing, this. Right? So I'm going to go look at pictures one by one and we're going to identify the visible structures and I'm going to draw a quick mock-up of it. Um, do you have to draw every single one of these structures? No. You have to draw as many of them as are relevant. The absolutely always required ones are those, right? So you must have a tube for the neck at large. You must have a head. You must have a rib cage every single time, okay? For the skeletal structure, if you can't see it, assume that you don't have to include it, okay? So the spine, you can't see that most of the time. Don't draw a spine unless you have something that you need to attach to it. The spine is going to be more relevant for the back muscles than for anything else, and we're not doing the back muscles yet. So don't worry about the spine just yet. The scapula, usually only visible from the back. If your model is facing you, it's very likely that you don't have to draw them. You just have to be aware that on the tip of the clavicle muscles, or sorry, the clavicle bones, <laughs> that there is this notch created by the scapula meeting up. So you may need that notch. Um, do you need the sternum? Not necessarily. Um, we almost always have the suprasternal notch because it's such a major feature of the front of the rib cage. Do you need the sternum bone itself? Probably not. I mean, later on, we're going to attach um, the pec muscles to those. Uh, and if we have breasts, then we need to make sure that at least the skin is anchored towards the center of that sternum. But we're not doing any of that right now, so you probably don't need it. And do you need these rib tips? No. But if it helps you to orient the ribs, then that's fine. Um, as far as the skull is concerned, we do have muscles that attach to the skull. So you need to know where this side plane cut is and approximately where this ridge for the bottom of the skull is. Other than that, you really don't need very much for that. The one piece of bone that's probably going to need to be done every time for this assignment is just the clavicles. You're probably going to need to observe the angle and then draw them in at least somewhat. Does it have to be as three-dimensional as this? I guess not all the time. Sometimes it's going to be hard to tell what's going on. But do your best to try to get it as dimensional as possible because that's going to be the anchor point for both of the muscle groups that we're including. Okay. The esophagus is another one you're probably going to need to include every single time because everyone's got one and it's a large portion of the front of the neck. Um, if you were drawing the back of the neck, you probably wouldn't include it. And by the way, the back of the neck is mostly um, trapezius muscles. So we didn't cover that and we're intentionally not doing that. So that would be this one back here. So for now, try to make sure that your poses are from the side or the front, although you can kind of just fake it by imagining two small tubes that go up the back of this tube. They actually flare out considerably though, which is causing that shape. But we'll cover that in the next section. Um, on top of the esophagus, we have the thyroid uh, cartilage. You do not need that unless your model is male or is prominently displaying the thyroid cartilage. You can possibly see this in women if they are craning their neck back extremely or, I don't know, swallowing or something like that, but it's very unlikely, so don't worry about that unless it's displayed prominently. That's the explanation for it, if you can see it, is this, this sort of pyramid wedge on the front of the esophagus. Um, the set of muscles in blue and pink we do need. So that's the levitator of the scapula, and then this is the sternocleidomastoid and the other portion of that. To start out then, let's just turn them all on. To start out then, let's do just a quick little review of the basic shape of these. So for the mastoid muscle, think of a wiffle bat, okay? Kind of like this. You got it small at the front, big at the top, kind of like that. Now this is insanely exaggerated, right? But this is kind of what it does. It just does this in a very, very subtle way, okay? And it's about halfway that the transition is occurring. Just make sure that this is a very, very boiled down transition and you'll have the right shape. So let me do it one more time. A little bit more like this would probably be appropriate, although it's pretty thin at the bottom. I would say the biggest difference in size you'd get is probably that. This is still going to be exaggerated, sort of like a very tall wine flute or um, sort of drinking glass, something like that. 
Um, usually it's going to be even more anemic because people just oftentimes don't have super strong neck muscles. So we could shave it down even further like this. And then really, really feminine slender necks are going to have even smaller than that. But remember, think wiffle bat because we've got this big flaring top to it. Um, every time I was taught a muscle group, we were taught some sort of uh, object to keep our mind on um, to remember the shapes, and wiffle bat was this one. Um, for the second little small bit, it's just sort of a band, you know, really just kind of a rectangular band that joins up uh, with the rest of the muscle. That's about it. Um, just remember that it attaches on the the first turning point and then almost back to the end of the um, clavicle but there's this little triangular window that's left over here so kind of start a little bit further out but not very and then just join it with the wiffle bat so if we've got the first part of it going like this somewhat and if it were I were going to just draw a band like that I gotta remember this has to thicken halfway through so I would start to transition it to a slightly larger shape kind of like this okay probably get rid of this first initial central band good to include dimension so if you could see it put some wrapping lines on this it always looks really nice too and it goes all the way up and attaches to this under ridge for the skull okay then for the second band it's just going to sort of come from the place where it's thickened up the um, trunk of this and create that little triangular uh, opening between the one that goes to the suprasternal not suprasternal notch and the one that attaches to the clavicle itself and if you can see perspective on that go ahead and fill that in okay so that would be an example for um, sternocleidomastoid okay as far as the levitator goes it was really just a, a band as far as I could see it didn't look like anything really super special and so I don't have a real shortcut for that only to say that it basically tucks underneath on almost the same spot although there were lots of little fingers that went somewhere else I'm going to assume bits of the um, spine perhaps that it was going to this one though the only time it's really visible is right here in this corner where it can sort of cut off the end between the um, the trapezius muscles it can kind of like trim that corner down and make it a little bit smoother and if you do tense up your shoulders in the back you can probably reach back around the large muscles you'll feel they are the trapezius but if then if you reach down in front you can kind of feel that sort of band just in between the front and back of your shoulders so for that one really just think about a slightly bent band like this it's pretty flat as well it didn't seem to have any roundness to it but just make sure that you're going to and from the right location. I also didn't see a whole lot of tapering in it. There was a little bit, so it was getting a bit thinner towards the top, but by the time you get up there, it's not really gonna matter anymore because it's gonna be buried by so much other muscle, okay? Um, I guess the very last thing that I would wanna cover is the esophagus, although that's pretty straightforward. It really just is a tube at the front of the um, larger kind of neck mass, and we did last time cover that the top of this this thoracic mass is sort of sloped towards the front down and cut flat and everything is built into that so if I turn these off this tube in particular you just have to make sure that it is bent forward so that um, it doesn't look like it's coming straight out of the the top of the ribcage so if I did a ribcage like this and then I did this and I put a head on there that's going to look really weird. Hopefully you guys can see that that looks quite strange. Can you guys see that that looks quite strange? I hope you can. Yes. Yeah, okay. So if instead, let's do another one. If instead we have it coming this way, right? It's nice to trim off that little top. You don't even really need to in order to make it look okay, but make it coming out that way, bend it just a little bit, okay? Then put a head on top, and it won't look nearly so odd. Okay, still kind of looks like he's wearing a, I don't know, armor or something like that, but at least it doesn't look quite so strange.
okay and I'm probably not even bending this as much as I should I'm looking at it critically and thinking like wow that's a really weird shape for the rib cage kind of has to go up like this but yeah what kind of eraser do I have on here oh there we go all right any questions about any of that sounds like no let me go and find some poses all right so I did load up quick poses but it was very very hit and miss to find proper neck poses we can see this one um, what's this guy's name he was in um, no country for old men you guys know this actor uh, del, toro. del toro yeah benicio benicio del toro I think so. Okay, so I'm going to grab that one because that's a that's a good one. But many of these are just insanely poor. This guy was pretty good because you can see the suprasternal notch really well as well as the um, sternocleidomastoid. This is the the thyroid cartilage, I believe, right here, and it's very understated. But the tip is up here. And so it's just following along the contour of his neck and dives back in. If he lifted his chin up, you'd suddenly see it. Okay, But right here, we can see going all the way up to the earlobe. And so you can kind of see that it's a little bit thicker and rounder up here. This, though, that is the trapezius going down and around the side. And this little highlight right here, that's the levitator. Okay, So you can just see it in front of trapezius. Trapezius there levitator here you can just kind of see it's it's heading up the the side of his neck there very hard to spot and then this small bit of round between these two lines that's the esophagus okay so i mean is there any point to me drawing over the top of this one it's kind of the model i already drew you guys don't want me to use this as an example do you do you prefer more bending shapes like this guy <laughs> He's not. Yeah? I, I prefer to see the example. Oh, I'm going to do examples. I'm just saying which pictures I should pick. How about like the side thing? Yeah, I was looking. Let's. Well, this one for sure. But you mean side like ear, right? Yeah, he's going back towards his back. I'm not okay, sure. Let's see. Let's check really quick if any of these was helpful at all. This one's a little bit little spicy but we got uh, some really good neck muscles on display there so I'll grab that one uh, let's see and some of them had like their neck covered by like clothing and stuff it was really obnoxious yeah this one would have been good if she didn't have so much hair what about this guy I mean we can clearly see neck muscles but yeah what the hell I'll grab that one too um, here he's turning but we don't really have anything. All right, let's see what else I got. Uh, this one I thought was interesting, especially because we can see thyroid cartilage there. He sort of got his hand in front of it, but you can see where the end point is down here. And then this thing that he's got his finger and his thumb on, those are the two um, mastoid muscles. So this one could work. Let's grab that. Uh, here we got an extreme sideways uh, rotation and also shrug of the clavicles so that one's actually excellent I don't remember picking that one but yeah oh and same sort of thing no shrug right so no shrug but really good strong rotation to the side and you can see the clavicles absolutely clearly so get that um, he's not really doing anything special you can see everything well he's bending to the side but he's also got his arms up so I mean, the head's doing some cool stuff. It's rotating away from us, and it's twisted to the side. This muscle is, is approaching the limit of its flexibility, but we can't really see much else. It's also really small. Uh, I picked this guy because he has underdeveloped muscles, but you can still see the tendons. And so this is one rare one where the levitator is probably more prominent than the mastoid. So this is where the mastoid goes. Mastoid, you can see, is wrapping up and around here. But this portion, this flattish portion here, that's the levitator before we get to what is the um, trapezius at the very back here. So it's kind of creating that really tall, lanky kind of uh, shape. 
she's twisting back a bit she's like perfectly porcelain smooth and you almost can't see any of the muscles at all I think that's why I picked this one is to, to show that this is how understated this stuff can get to the point where her um, trapezius muscles aren't even bulging really there's just this tiny little bit right here it's only because I already know where the muscles are going that I could even kind of imagine that I can see a line here um, that is what this little tendon here is as well that's the bottom of the sternocleidomastoid the second part of that mastoid I have no idea I don't see it anywhere but it would be right here we can sort of trace the contour of the clavicle as well and see how understated it can be tell you what I'll grab that one just so I can draw over it um, to see how how subtle that could all be so you want a sideways twist to the neck huh let's see or neck um, what sideways bend Uh, ooh, it's kind of okay, like that. <laughs> it's really gross. <laughs> a little bit much, but yeah. I all of this now is like skin folds. It's terrifying. Um, she's doing it too. She's doing it like by herself. I don't know what she's doing. She's like doing something funny. Wow, God. <laughs> Really scary. Um, they're all doing like this kind of yoga thing. I mean, does that do it? That one up there? Oh, we've, we've got a really strong forward bend here where we can almost see the seventh cervical vertebra as well. Eh? <laughs> do you want to take try to look for one, Robert, and see if you can find one for it? Because <laughs> this is like, those are so silly. Yeah, those are all really silly and weird. Uh, all right, so I'm going to drag some of these in here. We'll get the uh, gets Benicio del Toro in there. And I'll just insert them all at once so that we can take a look at our leisure. And oftentimes, by the way, you guys, I'm drawing over the top of these just for clarity. You should always be drawing next to the image or on your canvas without the image anywhere nearby um, that's how I would normally draw but because it's way easier to point directly at something for the sake of explanation that's what I've been doing here so don't be confused by that fact you should definitely not just trace over the model each and every time all right so place that get a layer above that and let's turn down the opacity a bit so we can take a look all right and I'll use an obnoxious bright color okay so we've got his skull right if we were to do the the whole Loomis skull it would be right in this area okay side plane we're gonna have that side plane right about here at the upper part of the ear and so it's going to occupy a pretty large portion of this Loomis head. Um, keep in mind that it is supposed to pass through right next to the eye or right where this ridge um, is on the plain range of the eye. And so that just goes to show how much of the side we're seeing and how little of the front. So that side plane would be right around here. And of course we can actually see his jaw going this direction, but if we were to find the front of the Loomis front of the lumosphere, then we would come right down here approximately kind of just cutting through all those features uh, if we were to place the center of the sphere and find an ellipse this is the ellipse that makes sense to me right that's the ellipse that makes sense to me uh, I may have drawn not quite tilted enough maybe because I'm going through his eye and not his brow so I'm going to try to double check that and let's try like right here about that is that going to be a bit better I'm trying to make sure I'm still centered on my sphere right that would be my sphere but still getting a side cut that makes sense and this looks about right to me and of course this would just cut straight through this side plane because we are chopping it off 
So now it, it basically makes sense with the model's head. So let's get rid of that just a little bit. The reason I'm doing that is just to show that we can construct right on top of this and kind of double check all those Loomis things. But it would be critical for placing wherever the nose goes. Um, and we would have to use that same kind of ellipse for that and where the mouth is, etc. We don't really need any of that. We just kind of needed to know where this place to socket in these muscles is on the jaw. But we can also you know, see that very clearly so we don't have to worry too much about it. I'll go ahead and just darken in the back of the skull a bit. That's going to be something like this. And I'll darken in the jawline just because that's what we're going to use. Probably through perspective, the opposite cut is going to be a little bit lower, which means this opposite jaw would be coming somewhere around here, probably. But we don't need to worry about that, really. All right, initial bend of the neck, we can see it going this way pretty strongly. Okay, And we can even kind of tell that this is that side plane, or that top plane, rather, of the rib cage. Um, he may be collapsing his back down a little bit. It looks like he's got kind of poor posture um, right now based on the direction of his back. And so if he stood up nice and tall, this line would probably flatten out just a bit more, something more like this. But right now it's leaned over kind of extremely. We can't see where the rib cage goes, but it's there. It's approximately going like that. We don't really need to do very much more than that because it's like a complete side view. Okay. Um, we can see super sternal notch right here. And his clavicles are not very easy to spot, but they're there. This little portion right here is kind of showing the clavicles are heading out and about over to this direction, but the perspective is really crazy on it right now. I'm trying to see. I'm thinking that it's probably coming almost right towards us, kind of like this, and then turning up and then continuing about to here, I think, something like that. But like I say, it's really hard to tell right now. So I'm seeing something like this. I have a question. Uh -huh. uh, will they be drawing the, the clavicles as a tube as well? Uh, well, that's what they are, yeah. And okay. most of the time, if you're going to construct them, that's basically what you're going to need. You could think of them as a, as a sort of line also, but there's stuff attached to the to the top. They're flexible. There's a pit that's created underneath them. So oftentimes here there will be a pit. Oftentimes in here there will be a pit. Yeah, they they kind of need to be three dimensional. And on the back one as well, they're sort of or overlapping. But here's where the other one would be, and then it's heading back, and it's going to go this way, and then probably that way, based on my guess, but. Like I say, it's very, very hard to see at this angle. Something like that. Anyway, so those are the clavicle attachments. We've got the basic neck mass would be right about here. I'm probably doing too much of an ellipse for this angle. Let's go ahead and do something like this. And then just put in a tube right through the center here. And I would say no, no wider than this. This is probably even overdoing it a little bit for the size of this neck tube. Because remember, we're going to put esophagus in front of this anyway. So this does not have to be um, the entirety of this mass or anything. And it sockets up into the head, probably like this. I think we're almost certainly looking up into the tube by the time we get up there. Um, my only concern would be, how much are we looking up or down at this portion? I think we're actually looking straight across at his neck at this point. So we're looking down just a little bit at the bottom of the tube, about straight across there. I actually don't like that line very much. Let's do that line one more time. I think that line would go about here. And then slightly up and slightly down right here. So I think our camera's eye level is right about here somewhere. OK, so that should be the basics taken care of. We've got a kind of skull structure. We've got a tube, and we've got what would be the rib cage, although we really can't see much beyond. Here's the um, suprasternal notch, and there's the sternum. So something like that. Uh, so now we want to build the muscles on top of that. If you guys are going to do it in different colors, then go ahead and do uh, either a different color for every muscle group is very, very convenient. Or you can do one color for the basics and one color for the muscles. That's fine, so long as you draw clearly. But just make sure you're not just piling color on color and color and we can't see anything. Uh, you can also use different layers for each if you want to. 
That way it makes it really easy to fine tune things after the fact if you end up not liking them. So let's turn this off for a second and just observe where can we see uh, markers for different structures. It's very hard to tell, but there's this sort of shadow right through here. Let's turn this up again. There's this kind of shadow right through here. You can kind of see a bulge in this area, and this is going to be that um, mastoid muscle. Okay. There's also this kind of contour that's going over this direction. That's going to be trapezius. Okay. The trapezius muscles are going to wrap this way, going down and across the back. This flat area on the top, this is where the clavicle is going to attach. The trapezius do continue up and back in the back of the neck back here. So between those two, we've got the levitators will be right in here, kind of as a, a wrapping band. Okay, So it's a little hard to tell, but that's it. Um, you can also see pretty strongly there's sort of this double bump feature to this um, thyroid cartilage. Typically, I'm just drawing it like that, though, just because it's a lot easier to remember. But there is like a little secondary bump on the bottom side if you want to be really accurate about it, although that could be esophagus. So that could be the esophagus kind of bending up, but I don't think it actually is. I think that's a, a little secondary bump of the cartilage. Um, also, you're, you're going to oftentimes see this, which is the skin underneath the jaw. So we've got jawline here, skin there. Um, there are muscles that attach from jaw down into skeleton to kind of support the the rest of the neck and the head, but oftentimes they just kind of create like a little pouch there, and they're not primary enough for us to focus on. So just keep in mind that you're oftentimes going to see that um, our esophagus is just going to continue straight up down into the throat area and sometimes you're just going to need a little skin to complete that off just so it doesn't look weird. Okay. Let me erase some of that just so that we've got those observations out of the way and let's see if we can draw those muscles. So I know that they're going to attach here the first couple of them. I'm going to rotate just a bit so I can get in there. There we go. And they generally will follow a straight line except they will wrap around the esophagus a bit and they'll wrap in whatever direction the neck at large is bending. So I've got this basic tube because I'm supposed to follow that if I can. If I just go straight across like this, it's going to look really weird. Okay. So generally we just kind of do this or something. It just doesn't look like it's interacting three dimensionally at all. Okay, so to that end, I'm going to try to come up and then wrap around this a bit and end up over there. So try to respect that there's this big cylinder there in the middle and keeping it fairly thin at first, okay, then allowing it to flare out and then finally complete up in the back of the earlobe. I kind of missed a little bit. We want to go behind the ear, so let me try one more time. Kind of back here. There we go. And then that's probably too thin to start off with. It's going to be something like that. There we go. Okay. And then if we can put some perspective on that, generally it's just going to be whatever was already going on on that surface plus the extra bulge. Right. So I've got this line that was coming straight across, but now I've got this thing on top of it, so it's going to bulge out and back in. So you can think of it like that. If you're going to normally follow this line, then we're going to go across here, then we're going to rejoin that line. So I could do that up here as well. Do that. Okay. And we can do that down here, although it should be a lot less down here because as I established the perspective is a little flatter down there. And then by the time we get down here, it's probably going to do it slightly the opposite direction. Okay. Like that. Alright, so we got that nice mastoid muscle kind of going into the neck. Uh, right up there. We do need the secondary um, band of that and I don't think I can see it at all on him. It would be right in here. Maybe this it might be right here but it's really hard to tell so I will just go ahead and put it in as a sort of semi straight and curving band that would do something like that and I don't even think I'm going to put wrapping lines on it because I can't really see it doing anything. We could put straight lines across it just for perspective purposes. Okay. Um, I'd love to do the opposite one. I can tell on my cylinder where it would end up. Right? It would end up over here on my cylinder in the back, but we can't see anything except for the initial starting place of it. So if you want to imagine that, this is the, the only visible part of that other mastoid muscle. 
but it would also come up and sort of wrap around, right? Kind of like this, and eventually join up. But its bend would be something like this. So if you guys want to imagine through the figure and do stuff like that, go ahead. But keep in mind that in this drawing, it's just not included. Like we can't see that at all. So typically I wouldn't, I would just draw the portion that I could see. Keep in mind that I can figure out where it's gonna go and then just leave most of it blank because otherwise it's gonna be a very, very messy drawing. Okay. Any questions so far just about that basic first step? Yeah, but I actually can see it, right? So I can see it right there. It is creating a line, so I want to start it, but I don't need to finish it all the way through. Okay? So then I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. I think it was yellow that I used for the um, for the throat. That is going to be sort of sticking right out the front of this initial um, cylinder, right about here. Let's see if I got... The perspective's a little bit too much on that. Let's try it one more time. I'm gonna go right about here, but it does stick out the front. It is gonna define this front contour except for the cartilage, okay? So you can actually feel your throat if you just kind of touch with your fingers. Um, this is bending along the esophagus, or along the um, greater neck bend as well in the same way. So I'm just rotating to be able to draw that more easily and it ends up in your actual mouth so it actually goes straight up and through um, but we can just stop here because we're not going to really need to go any higher inside of the head than that okay. and a few wrapping lines would probably make sense let's say that this is still the flat part and that this ends up being slightly up and this one is slightly down okay so that's going to help me place that thyroid cartilage and I do need to get rid of that line there because we can't see it okay. there we go so just kind of an extra extension off the front there so now we want to place that cartilage on top I'll use like an orange for that and so it's just a box it's I mean it moves all over the place so let's say it's halfway down or higher it's not usually lower down than that unless you're doing something in particular. So we'll say about here, I would say is the place. And it's sort of a box that wraps around a little bit, but then just kind of has a, a peak. So we'll say that his is something like this. Okay. And then it's sort of wrapping around back to here, but it's really more of like a straight, straight boxy shape. So I don't know. It's a little tough because if I'm wrapping around this round thing, something like that, <laughs> if we were to use straight lines. Shrink that just a little bit. I guess I really shouldn't like fixate on how it's going into the box. That's probably where I'm messing myself up, but there's the better perspective on that. Okay, so just something like this. And of course you can see it's a lot softer than that because there's skin over the top, but we're being really severe about how we're shaping everything. So a nice little, you know, almost pyramid box like that is all you really need. Um, I probably needed to move that here in perspective and wrap it around. So did I make a new layer for this? Oh crap, I didn't. Let's try one more time. Undo as much as I can. Uh, oh. <laughs> I didn't give myself enough undo, so I'll just erase out. I think I needed to place this more like here instead now that I'm looking at that. So the perspective is not very bent on either one of these lines, but this one's coming slightly down, that one's going slightly up. This would be approximately the middle of that so we can place our pyramid shape in there. And then on the back side of that, really we're almost looking directly at the side of this, so something like that, probably about right. Okay. Yeah, that's a little bit better. I put it too far back. It looked like it was facing towards camera instead of uh, sort of sideways to camera. All right, and then finally we need the levitator muscles. Let's see, I can get a kind of dark purple for that. So they attach to scapula, which are back here somewhere, but they sort of tuck between these muscles back here. 
and the the cleft that gets created by the um, clavicles themselves remember that there's a sort of notch that happens over here sometimes you're going to be able to see it that's kind of where the scapulas are they're buried underneath and this is sort of a ribbon that's going to extend from them so they're like that and just kind of comes up and it, and it sort of flares out all over the place honestly under here but we're just kind of representing it as a ribbon that kind of fills this gap and goes up and underneath and it attaches also right behind the ear just kind of somewhere back there to various bits of uh, skull and spine okay so something like that all right so that should be it because there's no way we're going to be able to see that opposite side um, I could try to put in scapula but really I can't see it at all so it's going to be something like this let's see if we turn off that does this make sense as a drawing I think so I can see all the bits of it mm -hmm. does that make sense to you guys and then if you really want to be very nice right an extra layer underneath these you can use the same colors just fill it in nice and big and then turn the opacity down if you're using digital programs so if I just fill all that in on a layer underneath like that turn this down then it makes a really nice kind of wash that makes it very very clear which is which fill that in real quick you could even turn your other layers to like um, multiply and so they will darken on top of these and make it even more clear but this is just kind of an optional extra to be very very clear and make it pleasant to view your drawings there we go and I don't think I would darken in anything other than the muscle groups because if you start doing it for the the major masses or the bones then it's going to be a lot of work and we're going to see a lot of stuff but that makes it suddenly very clear what we're looking at down here at the bottom in terms that I saw that that um, little tendon that final little piece of the uh, mastoid muscle just tucking behind the esophagus there okay so then I can merge these layers if I'm not going to use them anymore um, if you're at all uncertain that you're going to edit this later just don't merge your your final like wash layer but you can just leave it like that and there we go and that all makes sense anything that didn't make sense based on that example want to just try another Cool. Let's just try it. Let's see. So we got this one where she's looking up, and we can see very clearly some uh, collarbones and muscles. Lots of stuff actually going on there. Let's see. That's probably going to be a good one. Uh, on him, far less, except for that we can see this muscle back here, which is the uh, trapezius. So let's say not just yet for that. What about this one? Is that going off the page up there? really really clear I actually like that one a lot let's see what else we got um, she's got a shrugging uh, shoulders kind of action going on nice turn head shrugging shoulders really clear that one's spectacular let's see where's that one? Oh, he's tiny <laughs> um, not as good with this one you can still see quite a bit but not so much that's deltoid um, which is another muscle group we have not covered yet so it makes it look like it's that bony notch but it isn't um, this right here what's that part I'm trying to remember can't quite remember what this part is but that is not the levitator I don't think because the levitator has to go up this way uh, let's see what else we got. it's just skin yeah I think so because you can reach in there and it really hurts like if you push hard yeah okay that's the smooth one let's do the one where she's shrugging her shoulders this one's yeah yeah all right so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this one actually let's leave it up to to observe first because we can see everything so nicely all right so hopefully without a doubt right you can see 
this is like the exact shape of that muscle right and it's going something like that it's even kind of turning a corner right here where it kind of direction changes that's because the esophagus is right here and it's moving around that um, since we're just looking at surface skin though the actual width of this muscle is probably going to be a little bit greater something like that but that is a, a fantastic example it means that the um, super sternal notch is right about down here and we can kind of figure out from the shape of these that that's the scapula and this one uh, is it this okay this one's just a little harder to see because of that rotation let me see one more time Okay, so this is the other mastoid. This is a scapula for sure. I th think it's diving down, coming up, and it's, ah, here we go. That little notch over there, that's the other side of the scapula. So finally we can actually see this notch. Here it is. So we've got this happening. There we go. Something like that. Okay, it took a little bit to find that one because it's hidden behind uh, deltoid muscle, which is what we get up here. So that's deltoid muscle. Uh, but we can see it. Okay. So those are really, really good examples. Um, I think it's stopping right about here, right about here. The notch would be in between, and it's literally attaching to the sternum just beneath there. So the notch is not really down here. This kind of goes across and it starts, you know, anchoring itself into all of that just down underneath there. Uh, what else can we see? We've got this here, I believe that is the levitator right there, because it couldn't be that couldn't be trapezius, I don't think. Yeah, I don't I don't think there's any chance that could be trapezius. It's far too small. And so the levitator would probably come back right around to here or so, because the scapulas, if we were to see through, are probably gonna be right down there. And since she's shrugging both shoulders, this one a little bit, this one a lot, the scapula on the right is gonna be going up a lot. The scapula on the left is going to be going up a little, something like that. Okay, so I think that's the levitator right there. And then this part back here, that's the actual um, trapezius. Cannot see very much of esophagus, but a little bit here. And we definitely can't see any thyroid cartilage. It would probably, because of her rotation, be right about here at this point, if she had the Adam's apple but I'm not seeing it. Do you guys know how I'm determining that, by the way? I'm determining that this would be like the front of that esophagus. Where the shin is pointed Yeah, basically. So I'm, I'm taking this kind of um, ellipse that I would infer from the Loomis head and the fact that this is a side, right? This is a front. And so it's kind of giving me this rotation like this that direction. If I do the same thing with this esophagus and say, well, it's about this round, and I kind of find that position, I'm not looking up in the esophagus, I'm actually looking down, but the angle is the same, and it kind of gives me that point. I say, okay, that's the front of that cylinder. So in this case, we're looking up at her skull, that's the front, this is the rotation, right? Down here, we're looking down at it, so I just flip that, and that kind of gives me the front. And it makes me think that maybe that's the front just slightly adjusted to the right hand side okay and we know that this is the front down here um, of the rib cage so it creates this s shape you know through that where everything's kind of turning and moving okay. um do you guys want me to draw on top of this or next to this or not at all and do another one and just kind of point everything out is it more helpful that i just draw over it and point everything out or is it more helpful that i do an example from scratch Okay. What we need to be focusing on. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I figure I'll do whatever you guys ask because, you know, you're the ones here and um, I want to help as much as possible. But it occurs to me that maybe just going over these pictures is the better thing to do just because it's, it's uh, whoop, so instructive. Let me get a blue color real fast, though. Um, for the esophagus, right? The esophagus is probably anchoring somewhere right down here. You can see from this this arcing of her shoulders that she's probably leaning her um, her torso forward a bit in order to do this I think 
And so I want to say that the esophagus is something like that, maybe just a little bit lower, like right around here or something, and then bending like this and ending somewhere around here. Or actually, I said esophagus, didn't I? The, the basic shape of the neck. The basic shape of the neck. Yeah. No, 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 no. Sorry, I, I meant basic shape of the neck. We'd be doing something like this. Just so we've got all that. And I may be exaggerating the perspective, but honestly, sometimes it's better to exaggerate just a little bit, get a, a stronger sense of perspective. All right, well, let's let's just look at some more then, the ones that I downloaded, because that's probably going to be the better thing. Oh, reverse that. Get back up there. <laughs> um, which one? This one, we've got an Adam's apple. That one. Let's see that one. Okay, I'm gonna blow this up a little bit more so we can see more clearly. And I don't think, if you guys want me to do his as well, then we can, but I think hers is the more interesting. All right. So a little bit grainy and small, but we should be able to see everything. I'm going to shrink my brush just a bit because it's too big for this. Okay, so first of all, then, we want to see the top plane of the ribs. It's going to be right around here. Okay, so top plane of the ribs. Um, we can see suprasternal notch right down there, but we're trying to get that basic tube, right? We, can, we want to go a bit smaller. Of course, I drew that really, really large, but that's like the total space. So we want to draw a bit smaller, something like this. And by the time we get up here, it's either flat across or a little bit up. I want to say, and I'm judging from her jaw, that we can see just a little bit underneath her jaw right here, that I probably want to make the top of this tube a little bit um, angled upward. Just a tiny, tiny bit like this. Okay. And so then if I want to give myself a couple guidelines as we go, this one would be right around like here. This one would probably be the closest we get to flat, would maybe be like right there or something. This one would be just a little bit visible. Okay, So you can see how like delicate these um, wrapping lines can be in a real example like this, which is why we were picky about learning how to do them, because it can make all the difference between a properly looking constructed uh, object and one that has some sort of uh, bending on it. Uh, clearly we can see here's the suprasternal notch, here's that beginning of the, um, the two different muscles, the uh, mastoid muscles. You can see initially starting out small, then getting larger and wrapping around this form. There's a really nice overlap there. Um, we know that these end down between the ears. We can kind of figure out the line for the head. Usually I just figure out what's the, the basic line just by drawing straight through the eyes like that, just to find the left to right. So if I use that same line and I start at the ear lobe, right, then it's going to be somewhere over here on this line, just based on where it's heading. It's going to be somewhere like right over there is where her other ear lobe area is. So we can imagine that this kind of hits this and kind of around the opposite side thickens back out and becomes something like that on the opposite side. But again, we don't want to draw that because we're not actually going back there. You can also see this line of skin, right? That's mostly skin. I, it's possible that it's a little bit of thyroid cartilage, but mostly just think about that as skin. Um, we've got the opposite mastoid muscle right here, and you can see it starts to wrap around here very subtly and thickens itself out and is creating most of the thickness of the side of the neck there. Okay, so we could say that's about right. And if we wanted to create the extra kind of contour, just following it around like that. Okay, same thing for here. Kind of around like that. Okay, um, these two notches are definitely the place where the clavicles are attaching to um, sternum. And so we can see this one is initially heading this direction. Let me get a blue for this so it's not so constantly red. There we go. So that one's definitely going that way. This one I can kind of see is doing its turn right there. So then taking a look, this is her shoulder back here. 
So it's got to end up somewhere over here. I'm going to guess that we have a highly foreshortened straight bit followed by a turn followed by a straight like that. That looks too short. Okay, let me try again. That looks too short. Let's see, because it's got to end up all the way over there. It might be this instead. Let's see. That feels better. That feels better. Okay, so something like this. And I like to do the straight parts first because they're much easier to figure out their perspective and then worry about the um, the tube second. So if this tube comes down here, what we got? Just kind of like that, really. Yeah, just kind of, yeah. This one's going straight. I don't really see the bend in this one, so it leads me to believe it's going this way, where we're kind of looking along the bend, which would kind of make sense because it sort of does follow um, the direction of the top cut in the, the rib cage. So it's probably that this one is heading away from us like this. So this one is kind of perpendicular to our eye, I think, heading back and then again kind of rejoins slightly perpendicular to our eye and it's going somewhere over here. Pretty much makes sense like that. Um, this has got to be latissimus back here which is incredible because she's raising her arms, which means that this is kind of the flexed position of that latissimus muscle, which means she really didn't have very much muscle tone back there. Um, this one, I believe is the pec, yeah, that's the, the pectoralis majoris going into the uh, humerus, yeah. That's what it actually does. It goes from the sternum down here and it wraps up around the bicep muscles into the humerus about like a third of the way along. So I think that's what that is creating that armpit shape. It's a little hard to tell though. Uh, right. Yeah, cool. Vindicated. Um, I think that means this one is the levitator. So we'll say, yeah, okay, yeah, that would make sense because then the, the scapula is going to be down here somewhere. So the levitator probably is going to be that and coming up behind that again, joining somewhere way back there. So really, again, the only part that you ever see it is going to be this little corner where it kind of makes one little tiny bit of definition. Then you're never going to see it again. I have no idea where it is over in this opposite side. I don't see it at all. Uh, so then we're only left with esophagus, right? So esophagus would just be this round part right in the front of this basic shape. Pretty much it's actually the one defining this. I probably drew that a little bit too far forward, but it would come up like that, join up into the head, and then that would be that because we don't really need the thyroid cartilage. You guys want the Loomis head? I mean, we could do that. Do, 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 do. Go in like this and like this, approximately. Something like that. And then we would find center point and we project down and we find all the other ones that one goes around like that around like that <laughs> I don't know just kind of scribbling over the top of it now did you guys get the point for that yeah. Cool. Okay. yeah really dynamic pose really interesting okay so then let's take a look at another so we did that one this one's nice for clarity. Okay, let's do that one. This one's nice for clarity. Okay, so we can almost see sternum in this one. We're not often able to see sternum, especially because you kind of have to be really, really skinny and anemic to be able to see anything in this region, but um, it's right there. I mean, you can see a flat spot. There's sort of a divot right here and right here that's created uh, between the clavicles and the um, the major pec muscles and the minor pec muscles. Um, there are several different sets of the pecs and if you don't develop all of them then most likely you're going to have this kind of pit um, just underneath the um, clavicles where those muscles are not highly developed um, and then the breast tissue starts right all the way down here. And so although it's attached by skin, 
we're not really seeing anything in this big triangular region. So that can be a kind of indicator that you found the um, sternum. So we can see a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, here we've got one of the heads of the clavicle. Here we've got the other head of the clavicle. It's a little oddly shaped, I think, because we're kind of squeezing all the skin up in this direction. And also there's a watermark there, which is kind of obnoxious. But there's like this kind of compound effect on the surface here from lots of different things all happening at once. So we'll try to break it apart and see. This one's definitely clear, right? So we've got that one up and around. You can see a slight turn. This one, it's wrapping around this, um, this uh, esophagus shape and it's sort of disappearing somewhere in this region, but we can see earlobe right there. So it's going back here somewhere. Okay. This opposite one kind of wrapping around. This one's tough because she's turned her head over in this direction. We can kind of infer from her mouth at least that this would be the left to right kind of line of her head. So if we draw a line for that one, the other earlobe is somewhere over here, probably back there. And so if I just kind of sketch in a line, the opposite uh, mastoid muscle is going something like this, but it's diving down into all this skin and is really hard to identify. I'm going to say that this here is probably it, I think. Let's see, or is that the levitator? Really hard. To, it's hard to tell what it is, honestly. Like this back here, that's going to be trapezius, right? That one right there. The rest of it, I can't be entirely sure. I kind of see a half tone pattern here, but to have that mastoid muscle going this direct doesn't really make sense to me. So I'm going to say that probably, probably it's at least contributing to that skin fold there, if not the exact cause of that skin fold. So it's going something like this, let's say. Uh, mostly, I tend to widen, by the way, the mastoid on the outside portion of the muscle, just because it's going to be smashed in on the inside portion. So you could think of this right, on both sides as well, just because there's going to be this round shape in the middle that kind of forces it to go around each time. So just as a kind of side note. All right, let's get the clavicles in there because I've neglected to do that so far. So we've got this shape, it looks like, approximately like that. Okay, let's see? And then, yeah, so this notch right here, it's very, very smooth and hard to see, but this notch right here, I believe, is that point where the scapula encounters the cartilage. So it's going to be just a little bit below that. So about like this, do, 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 do. and of course the exact shape kind of differs a little bit from these handlebar shapes, which is why we've got all these little extra contours and stuff, but it's a nice base to start on. So this opposite one, I think it's more like this direction based on this opposite one, more like that direction. So this opposite one starting here, and I can see right there, there's where it's turning and I think we're looking in perspective right down almost the exact round shape of that one, of this diagonal bend, in order for it to terminate over here. That's what I'm guessing, because that creates a nice nice angled line right between the two shoulders, so long as she's not shrugging too much, and I think she probably is shrugging this shoulder just a little bit, um, but that's creating that uh, nice straight line to kind of define between the two clavicles. Okay, so this one, hey, we can actually see that second head of the um, mastoid muscle on this one. That's this right here. We got it. So here's the triangular shape, and then it's probably heading up somewhere in there. Okay, so finally we can actually see that. Maybe actually here. Did I forget to put that one on last time? Because I bet I did that last one. Yeah, um, it's not always very prominent, but if you see that little triangular shape, there it is. So that's going to be that secondary head and it may be going as high up as like over here or something. Right. Uh, let's see, we've got esophagus, which would be right in here, and heading up and bending in, okay, kind of forcing the shape of that mastoid. 
over on this side not really having too much of an effect but probably slightly bending this around that tube shape at least somewhat and we just can't see it if we were to contour that a little bit um, let's see so we've got the center of her face over here and this um, super sternal notch right here. So probably if we've got some center of the throat right about in this region so that um, cartilage would be coming almost right at us uh, if we could see it. I can see some shadow here but I don't really think that that's very much. It's probably that probably is the cartilage but we really can't see very much so maybe just a, a small indication that that's where that triangular shape would would be emanating from. And then we've just got the levitator, which is somewhere in here, and I think is probably getting squeezed up and around on this as well. But that clavicle is going to be somewhere down in this region and heading up in this way, up and behind. And then we can't see it at all on the opposite side. Um, yeah, that would be about it for these ones. I don't think I missed anything. I mean, we could indicate. Actually, I didn't indicate the rib cage at all, and I haven't been, so that's kind of a bad habit. But rib cage, I mean, the front plane of this, something like that in the first place, and then this would be sternum heading down from there. So if we had a wrapping line, a wrapping line, something like that. It's just too big for me to think about in this one. Cool, still good. Okay, one more. Which would you like, the the ridiculously understated one, the hilariously overstated one, or this guy with the gun? The guy with the gun. The guy with the gun. Okay. All right, guy with the gun. Let's see. All right, so obviously sternum very easy to spot. Oh, I'm drawing right on the same layer. Let's turn it down just a tiny bit. Okay, obviously sternum easy to spot. You can even see these kind of striations here. So there's this little like pit here, here, maybe a small one there. Um, those are the differing muscle groups of the pecs. Um, you can see them individually when they're developed enough or sometimes when there's a low enough amount of body fat on the person. And so you get this kind of striations. Um, here we've got the head of one of the clavicles. The head of the other one is bound to be over here. But we can also see the kind of turn of the clavicle forming this shadow as well as this one over here. And so that makes that pretty clear what's going on. We've got this on one side and sort of, eh, it's probably going a little bit further down, this one on the other side. Okay, something like that. Okay. And then we've got super sternal notch in between. I do have a question. Uh -huh. um, should we be drawing on top of a picture? No. Side. Okay. okay, remember, I'm doing this so that it's easy to tell what I'm talking about. <laughs> but you should be drawing next to these things, right? If you're not capable of drawing next to them, you won't ever be able to draw from imagination. You know, and we want to be able to construct all this stuff using those rules and, you know, carefully laying it out and making it all make sense, even when there is no person at all to look at. Okay, but these are the, the steps that we're following in order to make this uh, easy to understand before you're just left out on your own to invent an entire figure all on your own. And you can take this even further than that when you start to look at animal anatomy. You get to learn the ways in which those bones and muscles morph into different kinds of creature and then combine that with human and you get some really, really cool stuff. But yeah, for your assignment, do your best not to just trace over the, uh, over the person. But if you have to do that for some reason just to kind of get the lay of the land, you know, that can be a nice way to figure out where everything is anyway. All right, so we actually can see both parts of the mastoid muscle. So this is the one that is stretching up, bulging out, and heading up towards the ears. And then this is the one 
that is making that small triangular shape. And here is that triangular shape right there. So here it is joining up. Luckily, this guy has developed enough muscles that we can very, very clearly see that. Okay. Um, we can also see over on this side, kind of wrapping around. Okay. Here it goes, a little bit too big. Probably up about there somewhere. Let's try to get that a little bit nicer looking. Okay, something like that. Um, we can see the esophagus. Let me do it in red because there's nothing else red around here. The esophagus is going to be right around here and just slightly bending in this direction for his head. Something like that. Okay. And that means that this thyroid cartilage, I think it's right around here somewhere. So I can't really see it though. I think it's tucked behind the neck. Right about here. So there would be, I think, a box of it right there just just disappearing behind that jaw. That's what I would kind of expect because it can very easily slide into that skin because it's underneath all of that. So I'm going to guess it's somewhere like right there. Uh, let's see. The levitator muscle we can just see. It's in this little bit right here heading back. And then that's probably trapezius right back down there. So that levitator muscle somewhere back in this region attaching to that and then tucking up behind let's just shade that in just to say that that's where that's going uh, over on this side i want to say it's this also and this one's actually raised up so probably something a little bit more like this somewhere down in there i'm just putting a hard line to say back behind him somewhere it's, it's hitting the scapula we definitely don't see a hard line in the front though because that one is just kind of diving into the skin creating this pit kind of shape. It is really cool though to know all of these muscles before you get into um, the trapezius because the trapezius is just sort of a cape over the top of all of this and without that knowledge we'd have no explanation for this big massive pit that you see on both sides. Right? There's this big open pit area and it's really really weird until you know that there's all that overlap happening. Okay. Um, did I miss anything? I think that's it, right? Cool. All right, you guys. Any questions? Anything that you want me to demonstrate I haven't? Absolutely. Let's do it with her. Just because it's a small one, really. Pop that over there. All right. So then, if we're drawing completely from scratch, we got to do all of those major masses first, because they are the underpinning for everything. She's got a really big round head, but the hair bun is making it look bigger than it actually is. Her skull stops right about there. Okay. So let's go ahead and do a Loomis head to start off with. Measuring from her ear to her nose, it looks, or from her ear to her eyes rather, it looks about straight across, maybe slightly upwardly angled, something like this. Oh wait, I'm supposed to go from ear to brow. That's probably something I've been doing wrong recently. Uh, so it definitely is a little bit upwardly angled. There we go. Um, and it looks to me like this is right smack in the middle as if we're looking straight at the side of her head. So I'll go ahead and do a two thirds cut just like that. I don't think she rotated down, she rotated up. If that's that, and here's, I think it's right smack in the middle. So we'll just say just about like this. And then we can just drop that line in the front and we would need the first third and the second third, this would end up being jaw, sweeping back and joining up. Okay. So about like that. And that's basically all we need for this assignment. Connect the skull up like that, just so that I have a nice place to put all of those muscles to, but we don't really need any more than that. Is that about right? She does have a rounder jaw than that, but we're not really going for resemblance right now. Okay, so then we want a basic line, right, for the neck, 
and we want to put in the angle of the rib cage. So oftentimes I'll do the rib cage first. I'm seeing it something like this right here. And I was definitely seeing this kind of angle. Then we've got this forward bending angle for a neck, but it is curving back. So I'm going to say just about like this. I think for that neck, no, that's too wide. Too wide. So something right about like this, I think. And it looks really, really long and crazy right now, but it'll it would all fill in, especially when you add the latissimus muscles in. Unfortunately, I'm not going to, and so it's never going to look quite right. But it does look too long by default. It always does. Um, we've got this forward angle here, so that we can find the suprasternal notch right here at the front, and then I would need to define the clavicle. So typically, I'll draw this cut of the ribs, or sorry, of the top of the thoracic mask across, because it gives me the initial direction for the two clavicle heads, as well as their finishing direction, and then all I have to do is join them up with the diagonal, and it makes it a lot easier for me to imagine this, right, if I just start with the two straight lines, that, that, and then what are the diagonal lines that join them up, that, that. Okay, so that's what I would do here is say that this one starts, goes to about there, this one goes to about here, then this one goes almost straight back from camera, and this one goes straight across almost from camera. And so this one's going to appear a lot longer. So that's going to give me that bone shape. We can start to fill those in. Okay, just about like that. I think that's a bit too wide there we go and what's this part doing right like there okay same thing over on this side this one's going almost directly away from us and then continuing on that way okay so I've got a nice kind of construction for the clavicles I've got a basic structure for there we go this would be the sternum area for the rib cage angle for the rib cage um, and I've got that tube for the neck. Let's get just one contour line in the middle of that tube. How about a second one up here? Okay, so it flattens out a little bit in perspective because our eye line appears to be somewhere like here, like right at her lower jaw. It could be as high as her ear. Okay, but I'm just thinking, am I looking down into that tube or not? Uh, let me switch to red for muscles then. I can see the tendon for this uh, mastoid muscle right here and it's kind of just a straight shot for this one so for this one in particular it's basically just yeah it's just kind of going straight there just like that I'm gonna flare out a bit kind of like this okay uh, for the other one I can just barely make it out right there and that's because it's heading to an opposite earlobe that is almost out of sight back there so we're really only going to see about that much of it and then it's just gone um, for the esophagus which would be the other major part that we would see here we do kind of just see the front of it but that's about all right about here and it's not really very dissimilar from that larger shape that I drew but it's in there right about like that uh, let me see is the opposite head not really so this other bit for this mastoid muscle we can't really see it at all and she's got a very very smooth kind of contoured shape to her neck and her muscles but it's going to be something like here and here then the levitator your guess is as good as mine i mean i know where it goes which is like here but i cannot see it at all so somewhere back in there probably want to use a different color for that but that one and then on the opposite side it would be doing the same thing and probably ending up somewhere back down there but I cannot see anything sticking up over this shape of the clavicle so not even gonna bother with that this does make me aware though that I didn't quite do the perspective right on this clavicle because it is defining the shape on that opposite so I flattened the perspective out a little bit but oh well too late I just need to commit to my drawing now which means I probably actually could put a little bit of the levitator in here. 
something like that. Okay. Um, no thyroid cartilage. We don't really need to make any allowances for this skin, but it would be attaching something like that. Um, yeah, I mean, basically we're done unless I wanted to do the um, the shape of the back of the neck muscles and stuff. And unfortunately, because I distorted it, we would probably end up seeing a little bit of it over on that side. Um, did that work for you? Yeah, thank you. Cool. All right, you guys, anything else? Or is that our demo for today? Sounds like it. All right, you guys, if you have any trouble, be sure to put a message in Discord where we can all see it and answer it. Um, do your best to uh, carefully construct all of these and make sure that you observe all the three-dimensional positionings and shapes. Uh, but sometimes you're going to have a really challenging one like this where just nothing is visible and you kind of have to go through the motions and know that everything is under there and it's creating at best very very slight differences in tone on the surface it will be easier if you use muscular or male figures but if you like a challenge go ahead and do some of these sometimes all right um so you don't mean without my drawings on it, you mean with my drawings on it, like this. So the, the one that you had at the beginning before you did that. Ah, uh, this one. Yes. Okay, do you want everything turned on, or do you want separate ones with stuff turned off? I, I think what everything turned on, is so I can just memorize all of the pieces. <laughs> before you answer, this is what it looks like when everything is turned on. Are you still sure? Yeah, I just want okay. to be able to all right. You got it. I will do. All right. Thank you, guys. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording, and I will see you next week.